This is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Back here in Brooklyn, New York. Just filmed a camper van tour at Brooklyn Camper Vans and I bumped into Chad. Now you might know Chad, he's been on the channel before. Well, he's gone through some changes and he's gonna give us an update tour today. Hello and welcome to New Jersey Outdoor Adventures. Hey Patrick, thanks for coming by. Yeah, I, uh, I've done a few changes here. Uh, you may notice some things are a little bit different from the last tour that we got to do. Um, the last time uh, you saw me, I left uh, New York City. I went to Seattle for a little bit, and while I was in Seattle, I believe my van was targeted because I was just a little too extra stealth. No windows, some commercial equipment boxes on top of the van, and just made me look like I was a commercial vehicle. And because of that, uh, my rear window was smashed in, and they came in looking for some stuff. Where I was parked, I was amongst a bunch of other van lifers who weren't stealth, and uh, they were, I was the only van that got smashed into. When they came in, they stole just tool, all of my tools. Uh, and then they decided to just break a bunch of stuff. So they broke cabinet doors, my bench seating, my bulkhead wall door, and just made it to where I had to do a full gut job on the thing just to be able to rebuild it. And when I did, I decided to rethink everything and uh, change it all up. Um, one of the big changes that you'll notice here is I used to have a bulkhead wall. Um, now I have two swivel seats, so my driver and passenger seat do swivel around and this really opened up everything just made it uh, much more luxurious i have multiple options of where i can sit in my van and just kind of lounge out uh, i did a nice uh, dinette table right up a very front here with a dual bench on the opposite side so even when i do have my curtain closed off for my forward cab uh, i do have a nice seat place to sit where I can either have two people at the table or I can lounge out with my feet across. Um, up front here, in the cab, you'll notice that I have a newer radio system. Uh, this just makes it a lot nicer when you're dri driving cross country. I added in a uh, rear view camera system, which this is actually a monitor that will turn on and uh, show that uh, rear view camera the whole drive. I have nice insulated windows. These are um, professionally built by a company that I purchased online from. So specially designed just for the Ram Pro Master. They have a nice feature to where they can flip down and you have a nice bug netting so you can open up your windows, get some ventilation across in the cab as well without having bugs come in. Down at the feet here, you can notice my feet are nice and flush with the floor because I added a extension uh, raised floor platform here for that bench seating area. Um, the Ram Pro Master is kind of unique from all the other vans to where they have a lower floor, so it's an easier step up in. Um, so I raised this platform here and when I raised it up, I added some extra storage underneath. So I have storage on both sides for anything I need to take outside, nice stools and things like that, just convenience. I have my old lagoon table system from my last van. Uh, this allows me to add a table outside if I wanted to. And then going underneath my bench seating here, I added a upgraded toilet. So before I didn't have a toilet system inside and now I have a dry flush toilet here. So this is uh, one that doesn't require a uh, black tank. So just a lot easier to use and mostly for emergencies. Being in New York City, you can still kind of just go anywhere. Up top here, I added a window so that uh, taking away those stealth elements and adding some nice cross breeze into your van, especially in New York City summers, it's really required. Um, to make sure it's still kind of secure, I added a metal bar which locks in place here and this just kind of will deter people from being able to climb in through it i got my ceiling up top here these are just slats slat fixtures which i tried to color tone match to all the rest of the countertop here i have cabinetry all the way across the top for storage which is mostly used for my kitchen area here um, as you can see, I split my kitchen in half now, so it's no longer going across one side. I got a kitchen on either side. 
Got my oven, my Camp Chef oven and stove top underneath the counter, giving me more storage space, which is propane. And I can access all my propane storage and refill the propane tanks underneath here on this side. I lined all the walls with this fabric, which is just spray adhesive and stapled on the back side. This just kind of made it look a lot nicer than just regular paint. Gives it a nice feel as well. Uh, my countertops here are all butcher block, which are stained to match all the rest of the flooring and ceiling work. Coming over to my kitchen sink here, which I did upgrade to a proper kitchen sink this time which has hot and cold water, which previously I did not have hot water. Um, I have my water pump system and a timer switch for my hot water tank so I don't leave it running too long, draw any power. I have filtered water in case I need a drink from the water tank system. I added a 22 gallon water tank. Previously I was just going based on six gallons. Another thing I learned with my old van is that I did not want to have to turn on lights just to grab something out of the kitchen, ca kitchen cabinets here. So I added in switch activated lighting system. So when you open up a drawer, it automatically turns on an LED strip for each individual drawer or cabinet here. That way I can easily access anything I want while it's dark at night, which brings me down to the toe kick lighting on the floor, which is also activated by a motion sensor over here. Uh, I changed out all my floor to this nice vinyl click-in flooring. I used to have peel and stick, which is not a good idea for van life as it separates. This uh, will not separate. I, all these cabinets are purchased from uh, just a box store because uh, I didn't want to have to build drawers. This one I did have to custom build due to the oven chef stove here. So got extra storage down here. Um, underneath, I got my clothing storage everywhere for this cabinet. Down in the garage area, I have my electrical system on this side, and I have my water tank system on the opposite side to kind of balance the weight. I have a step up to get to the bed and a ladder rung to climb up all the way into the bed, which brings me to the bed space here. Over here on this side of the kitchen is my Dometic 12 volt fridge. I did downgrade uh, learning from stakes of the last van build. I had a cooler style large uh, double fridge freezer, which I just never used all of it. So I shrunk it down to this little guy, put it up on top of the counter, just made it a lot easier to access. I didn't have to waste space with a pull out drawer system. And this has been working out a lot better. Up top above here, I have my microwave on one side. I got my nice mirror, vanity mirror, and then all my medicine cabinets on the inside of there. Over here, I have uh, overhead storage for all my clothing. And then this is also where I have all of my brain system for the, my smart van. Um, I added a lot of security and safety features to the van. And so this is kind of what houses it all up there. You'll notice I do have a little curtain right here. This curtain closes off my bed space, which is mostly for my AC unit. I did upgrade and add an AC unit into the van. So not just having those windows to add cross breeze, but uh, originally here I had a Max Air fan and they're pretty much the same hole size. So I pulled out the Max Air fan, added in the Dometic RTX 2000 AC unit, which is 12 volt. And uh, I just learned that last year at New York City summer was just miserable in the van without it. So I added that, put in a curtain to close it off. So I'm really just having to cool down the bed space at night so you can fall asleep. And let me tell you, this thing's amazing. <laughs> um, coming to the back here, you notice I do have pop outs for each side of the bed uh, to add in that extra foot and headroom when you're sleeping. I was originally, I'm five foot 10. My head was right up against each side of the wall. So those pop outs about three inches each side and that really helps. I can stretch out my toes now. On this side, I do have a couple fans. So one of the fans is mounted. I do have a clip on fan which can move around. They're all 12 volt fans, just really, Helps when it's not so hot, I need to run the AC unit, but I can just uh, get some air flowing. 
On the back side, I did add in some pop-up cabinetry to just add extra storage to the bed area. And coming back up front, I did add in a whole brain to my van, which I did mention. This is running off of Home Assistant, which is a app that you can kind of custom build for your needs. So everything in my van is run off of relay switches. So I could turn all of my lights on and off. I can monitor all my camera systems from here. Uh, all of my door sensors, my window vibration sensors, everything, all which was shown up in that cabinet up there, just all is controlled right here. You can control it from the tablet, you can control it from your phone, whether you're right in the van or across the country. So now let me take you around the outside of the van. I did add a few changes here. Um, you'll notice my solar panels are mounted still on the ladders, which I had originally. That just still worked out well, but I did split the ladder onto two sides and that added more space for solar panels. So now I actually added two extra solar panels on top. So I have 400 watts of solar. Um, I added in some more security features. So I have this sliding latch lock, which will slide across and it will lock this door down. So all of my doors have locks on the inside so I can open it and get in and out in an emergency. But this is the one door where it doesn't have an inside latch. So this is the door I would exit through, slide latch this. So even if someone did break inside, they wouldn't be able to open any of the doors to take large things out. They'd have to keep climbing in and out of a window. Coming back, uh, you'll notice I added some spotlights. That's just for visibility at night, which are also remotely controlled. So I can turn on a light to get in and out of the van. Uh, here are my bump outs uh, on the van that I added in. Uh, here's my ladder, which was, brings me up to the rooftop where I have my RTX AC unit and all my solar panels. Uh, spotlight and cameras on the exterior as well. And this brings me into my garage. So inside the garage here, I did change it up a little bit. I tried to add some nice walls to kind of make it a little bit better for storage area. Um, I went with bins for keeping everything neat and organized as best as possible. Down here you can see this is where I st store all of my luggage for work. On this side is gonna be all of my water systems. So you see, I have a residential household point of use 2.5 gallon water tank, which is my heater. And I replaced the 120 volt element for a 12 volt uh, heating element so that I can run it off of my 12 volt system. It's all PEX plumbing in there. Have my water fill right here. And then on this side, is all of my electrical. So I have three batteries, which are 200 amp hours each. So I have 600 amp hours of lithium battery. I also have Victron equipment for my solar, my DC to DC, and then I have an Ames inverter for my in, uh, 120 volt power. Chad, thank you very much for taking the time today to give us a tour of your updated creation. That's very interesting what you mentioned that you were too stealth. Yes. When you think about it, yeah, your van might have looked like a work van. So someone's thinking, there's thousands of dollars of tools in this thing. And they actually wound up taking your tools and trashed it inside, gave you an opportunity to kind of rethink the floor plan, rethink of how you're using it, and do another build. And I remember from your original video, your build was approximately $7,000. Yeah. Now, what with this new revamp, what are you into this with thing? With the full revamp, I put in $12,000 for so this rebuild. an additional $12,000. Yes, yeah. And that's not bad, you know, 7,000 for your original and you used it for what, a couple of years? Yeah, I got three years out of it. And uh, saved a lot of money on rent because you are a flight attendant? Yeah, I'm a flight attendant. So I live uh, in a different state than where I work. So this is my secondary home. And they have a name for that. It's called Crash Pad? Crash Pad, that's right. 
Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it saves you a lot of money. And, you know, another $12,000. You did a lot for $12,000. That home assistant's pretty impressive. I had one of those on the channel once before, and it requires a lot of patience to initially set up. That's once you have it set up, it's pretty foolproof. Very true, very true. That's your YouTube channel is where I got the idea for it. Well, I'm glad to have you back on. Sorry about your target hit of your van getting destroyed, <laughs> uh, but I'm glad that the van itself was fine, right? You just had to replace some glass. Do you have the security film now on this glass? Uh, I put security film on one side and I still need to do it for the rest. But yeah, that's another upgrade I'm gonna be doing too to the van, a security film just to make it harder. Just makes it harder for someone to get you know. Exactly. Well, I'll make sure I put a link in the description because you have some amazing journeys and trips and I wanna yeah. make sure our viewers could follow you. This is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. I'll see you soon.